So uh, uh, I wrote down too much big paper. I, I will not read it all because we will get bored. I will just read some topics. So for who doesn't understand English, mainly my English, I'm reading from page 83 now, and I will read just a pair of lines at uh, the end of the page, and I will go in on with the page after 84 with other two lines, after I will read the conclusion, and we will discuss it together, just for the main proposal of my paper. For the rest, if you want to read it as well, if you don't want, it's better. Um, here, after a long story about it, I propose um, a little definition of philosophical disease because I asked myself, well what, well, what it is a philosophical disease? We are now talking about philosophical disease in this particular Congress, but we've never done it before, even uh, at least in my experience. Okay? Um, so I tried to answer myself. The philosophical disease, in my opinion, is the inability to organize acquired data at the speed at which we are supplied. The reason why I call it philosophical disease is not so much as in the causes, rather as in the solution. Such a disease, in fact, is not manageable with anything but a philosophical reorganization of priorities, a different way of thinking, a slower and neither, um, and neither thinking within the space of a day dedicated to the updating of our thoughts following the stimuli received from reality. The philosophical disease can have any kind of consequences, from the inability to deal with one's father or with one's partner to the fear of insects of um, the block of studying or, or the block of studying capacity. It all depends on what part of your life uh, you decide to um, or you happen to leave behind. And after a lot of other useless words, I propose um, a lot of methods that I started, the Italian one, the French one, and after I propose my personal view, um, I hope that I will be brief, it's something like a page, but well. Um, my, uh, let, um, let me tell you my more specific method. What characterizes me more is undoubtedly um, the love for irony. Irony has often been unpopular in the world of philosophy and especially in the academic philosophy, but I am encouraged to discuss it at, the, at this meeting by the fact that uh, in Lusden, Lou Marinoff and Lydia Amir gave in their master classes large spa, uh, space to this concept. Some time ago, it, it was 2001, we begin to meet with other students of philosophy every Wednesday in a restaurant near Florence. Uh, we were 20 years old and we thought that philosophy would save the world. In 2005, still trying to seek a new philosophy that could really help people with everyday life problems to understand the world and change it for the better, we founded the Little Heroist Movement. This movement organizing a large number of events, establishing itself, uh, well, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> when I started thinking about working in philosophical consulting, I came from more than five years in which irony was my main job and the only way I knew for philosophy to become a practice. We had shows in the streets, in coffee shops and bookstores, videos on the internet, and we filled the theaters with a variety of shows, not forgetting to um, starting a small publishing house too, and making sure that behind every joke there was a profound and documented thought, because empty irony, of course, is useless. Irony without philosophy is not even an instrument, it's just... Um, 
Iron is needed because only th um, through paradox uh, reduction ab absurdum we can see how sometimes some things that seem brilliant are actually not very effective in achieving the objectives. Only the complicity uh, which the, uh, recreates laughing along with some people uh, uh, with uh, some simple joke can make us gain customers' confidence and make him relax and be able to overcome without straining those um, logical resistance that normally when he's long he has difficulties coping with and that even in front of the specialist he often fails to unfold. Not by chance, Erasmus and Bruno used it to explain their theories and Socrates, like us, use it to make sure that people could open to themselves. It is thanks to irony that we accomplish the step that psychologists cannot or want not to do. While they understand the passion and explain him that we, he must do, um, we make him gradually understand himself and decide what to do. In addition, irony has a therapeutic function in itself. How now it is, it is patent. Laughing is, for example, good for the heart. This, is, this was confirmed in a 2005 in Orlando, Florida, by a study presented to the, academic, uh, to the American College of Cardiology. Furthermore, laugh produces endorphins that um, uh, discovered only in 1975 are chemicals produced by the central nervous system and containing a powerful analgesic and exciting act activity. They furthermore act like natural anesthetic with benefits similar to morphine and other opiates, pain relief and, phys and physical comfort. Not by chance, recently is born um, gelotology, the <coughs> science that studies laughter. To give a broader spectrum of the benefits, we can listen to the therapy of, um, of Professor Franco Schirpo, that in spite of his name is uh, American, lover therapy ex expert and student of the famous Patch Adams. According to him, love causes 1. the increase in oxygenation of the blood, 2. the replacement of air reserve in the lungs, 3. The stimulation of serotonin production. Four, the stimulation of endorphins production. Five, the stimulation of antibody production. Six, increase in the blood flow of internal organs, uh, thanks to the message produced by movements of diaphragm. Seven, an increase in blood circulation of the epi uh, epidermis and, fas and facial muscles. 8. Improvement of abdominal mus muscle tone. 9. Improving self-esteem. 10. The rise of psychic energy. Neutralizing, uh, 11. Neutralizing the efforts of stress. 12. Neutralizing the efforts of anxiety. 13. The development of a greater susceptibility to social relationships. I'm convinced. <laughs> well, that's all. It looks like a joke. <laughs> Obviously, since I'm not a physician, I have, to, um, I have collected the, uh, this data uh, without a bibliography research, without any field research. But as far as my professional experience is concerned, as I mentioned, I can guarantee that none of my um, consultancies would have been possible without laughter, and even most for my life. Of course, you can always think that it is if so pervaded of irony, philosophical consulting cannot be considered a serious matter. Well, if that, thanks God. <laughs>